All right, so there was a civil war in the Russian Empire from 1917 until 1921, and the Bolshevik party rose to the top with the most power, and that was led by V.I. Lenin, or Vladimir Lenin. And he used the idea of Marxism, which was an idea written in a book called Manifest Destiny by Karl Marx, who is a German. And in the Manifest Destiny, it, it states that capitalistic societies keep the rich rich and the poor poor. Um, leaders, business leaders, are going to make sure they don't pay their workers enough for them to be able to not work for them. In other words, you know, they're going to pay themselves more than they're going to pay their workers. So this was the whole idea of the basic idea of communism. And so at this point, this area was called the Soviet Union or renamed to the USSR. And the reason why it was the USSR, the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, is because a Soviet is each republic's own governing council. So there were 15 Soviets in the Soviet Union, and those are the same 15 countries today. Now, V.I. Lenin was number seven on our list. So remember, we talked about the Rus being number one, and then the Mongols, okay? And then Ivan the Third and Ivan the Fourth. And then we talked about um, um, Cap or what do I want to say? Uh, Peter the Great and then Catherine the Great. And so now seven is Vladimir Lenin. So there are statues and pictures and frescoes and um, painted, you name it, all over. Um, the Soviet Union and Soviet-controlled countries of Vladimir Lenin. And um, let me just kind of show you some of these, okay? So if I go through here, you can see that there are lots of um, statues. This one happens to be in Mongolia. Here is one where um, the student is just working on his homework in a park that has a statue of Lenin. Um, here is one in Czechoslovakia. Um, here's a tiny little one that somebody in Ghana looks like they're going to smash down. Um, here's one that is not in great shape, but you can see there that it is in um, a Ukrainian city. Here is another one that, again, it looks like all these people are just begging to see Lenin. So it's just a head of Lenin here. And again, this is in Cuba, which, of course, kind of align themselves. Here is one that is in another Ukrainian city that still stands today. Um, here is one in an area of maybe a farm area here. And it looks like it's in Moscow or outside of Moscow. Um, here's a whole bunch of them that hadn't ever been used, but they were made in a factory in Moscow. Here's one with Lenin with a hole in his butt um, in St. Petersburg, Russia. Um, here's one even found under the sea in the Black Sea um, off of the Crimean Peninsula, Peninsula, which is in Ukraine. So um, there are lots of these around here that you can actually see that, um, again, are all over the world. And so he's very um, significant. He's considered to be the father of communism. And you can actually go view his body in, um, in the mausoleum in the Kremlin in Moscow, Russia today. So he is number seven. All right. So after um, Lenin died in 1924, and again, you can still view his body today um, in this glass coffin, which... He's been embalmed, but um, the only thing you can see is that I had a former student that went there, and I asked if you saw, went in and saw um, Lenin's body, and she said, yeah. And I go, what does this guy look like since he died in 1924? And she said, the only thing you can tell is his fingernails are turning black. So you can definitely tell his body is decaying, but because it's in this sealed glass coffin without oxygen, um, you know, it's, it's decaying at a much slower rate. So in 1924, Lenin died, which was only three years after he took over. 
and it was Joseph Stalin who took over as the Soviet dictator until 1953. So Joseph Stalin is number eight on our list. And again, he um, really pushed for Russia to become this industrialized nation. He helped defeat Hitler. He was an ally of ours at the end of World War II. Um, but he also did a lot of bad things. He really was angered by the end of the World War II because um, Hitler was able to attack Russia and in the Battle of Volgograd kill some of the um, most Russians in, in the war at all. And so he didn't feel like anybody came to his rescue. So he was angered after that. And so he used a lot of terror. He, um, you know, had actually like death camps and you were sent to the gulag, for example, a forced labor camp out in remote Siberia. And so he made sure that, again, communism was still being used so that there was no classes, there was no rich and poor. Instead, he said, you know, everybody just works for the good of the country and you are sacrificial because the most important thing is for you to help the Soviet Union become the best country in the world. So here again, it just shows a picture on the USS Iowa battleship that's off the coast of Los Angeles, which was used um, by Roosevelt to go over um, to terrain, which is in Iran, to meet about, again, World War II. And so that's a picture of Stalin on the left, Roosevelt in the middle, and Winston Churchill on the right, who were very instrumental at the end of World War II. All right, so Soviet economic geography. Stalin, this was all done by Stalin because Lenin didn't have enough time to do that, um, made several five-year economic plans. And those economic plans were to become self-sufficient. He wanted to make sure that they could do everything themselves. And so the government controlled everything. It controlled the farms, not only the farmland, but what was gonna be planted. Um, what buildings were going to be made. Um, you didn't get to choose your occupation. You were told what you were going to do. They limited the salaries. Um, you couldn't trade um, outside of the country. They did very limited trading with other countries. You were not allowed to travel in and out of the country. Um, so because of all of this control, um, Russia or the Soviet Union had to import a lot of food and some un other industrial items because Stalin's policy was that he wanted to become self-sufficient because he was angered that nobody helped him at the end of World War II. And um, he said, we don't need any of you. I can do this by myself. So the Iron Curtain was a term um, coined by Winston Churchill, who said that Stalin and the Soviet Union put up this quote unquote iron curtain to separate itself from the rest of the world. And um, they didn't, again, allow any goods in and out or limited. They didn't allow you to trade in and out. They didn't let you to travel news. They censored everything. They didn't allow people outside of the Soviet Union to know what was going on. And they didn't allow the people within to know what was going on either. Um, there was a lot of trade barriers and again, rigid censorship. And so this is when things really got bad between the Soviet Union and other countries like Britain, like the United States and like France. So life in the Soviet Union was not so good. Um, they lacked food because of the poor government running the farms. Um, they didn't have very good housing. Many people lived, several generations lived in one small apartment in, in Moscow to get free food because they could wait in line for hours to get this free food. Their working conditions, there were no rights that the workers had about number of hours or safety. They could literally work you to the bone and they probably did that. Now, they did do one thing very well, and that was to improve literacy. So their literacy rates went from 25% early in the Soviet Union's existence to over 90%. So that was very good. So education improved. Areas like science, technology, medicine improved quite a bit. This is when the Soviets sort of um, explored the idea of 
of using steroids to become stronger, and it was used a lot in the Olympics. They excelled in space, and this is when the space race began. And so Sputnik was this um, this small um, satellite that was launched on October 4th, 1957, that was bigger than a beach ball, but about the size of a beach ball, weighed 183 pounds, and it orbited the Earth in 98 minutes. And so this was huge in the space race for them to say that they did that first. And this really launched the United States to start NASA because later on, um, the United States started NASA. And of course, we didn't accomplish a lot in the space race until the 60s. So it took us a while. There were less personal freedoms, as I mentioned. You could be jailed or killed for talking bad about the government. They didn't allow religion because that was a selfish thing, and you were to do everything in your power to better the Soviet Union because the state was more important than the individual.